another strange winter in New England. Yesterday, it uh, hit 50, 50 degrees. There's no ice on the pond and there is no snow anywhere to be seen, even in the woods. And today, it started out about 32 degrees. I'm out here right now and it feels like it's probably about 40. Should have brought a pipe wrench with me to grab that. And some Earl. Well, brought some really big channel locks and some PB blaster. Figure PB blaster since it's a rust that's in there that seems to be the culprit for what the biggest issue is with the threads. I mean, this doesn't seem to. Oh, oh it's, it's going. This actually is working. Not bad for a noob. All right. So now that I know this is gonna fit, I don't have enough time to lift this motor off today. And because bad weather's coming for tomorrow, I'm gonna button this up and I'm gonna throw the tarps on it, tarp this puppy. I'm gonna take this back to the shop and I'm going to finish making this tool so that I can put a lifting ring right on this. All right, so here's my plan. I'm going to uh, cut a flat on this side and then a flat on this side. So the two opposing sides, I'm, sides, I'm going to flatten it out. And I'm going to make this thin enough so that I can actually fit it in between here. And uh, then I'm going to drill a hole for this bolt to go through. So that this will actually go in here and then the bolt will go through and then I'll have a nice hook to hook on to. Also, if all goes well, I'll be able to uh, end up with this being a thickness, um, a standard thickness that I'll be able to just put a wrench on it and use a wrench to turn it. But I think before I do anything, I'm going to... Uh, face this end here because that's just the saw cut on this end that's never been faced. That's better. Uh, it's got a sharp edge. Okay, so I decided I'm going to use uh, an inch and a sixteenth, one and one sixteenth inch wrench. So I want to leave one inch, sixty thousandths over one inch when I'm done. So this is two inches in diameter. So that means I've got to take off 940 thousandths total, but I want to split it between the two sides. So 940 divided by two is 470. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 470 thousandths off of this surface, turn it over, and do the same thing on this surface. And that should leave me with just over one inch tab in the middle here that I'll be able to use this wrench on to tighten it and be able to drill a hole through and slide this down over. Well, I'm all set up with my shell mill in there uh, to make this cut. Uh, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna try and take uh, 200 thousandths cut uh, this is a two inch diameter um, cutter. So if I did my calculations right, it should be 200 RP, uh, about 200 RPM. So that actually seems a little fast for this size cutter. 
Well, let's see what happens. We'll, we'll go real easy with the feed and bail out if it sounds real bad. Actually, if it's too loud, I probably have to quit for tonight anyways. The kids are already asleep. Reduce the depth of cut to a uh, hundred thousand to try a little bit higher feed. Maybe four hundred thousand. I hit the rapid button by accident. <laughs> I'm going to take fifty. Actually a nice finish. So I'm just gonna keep the feed and speed the same and take the last 20,000 finish cut. Uh, I moved the camera by accident. Well anyways, so I'm gonna let the uh, cutter completely come off of the part on this side because it's the finish cut. And then that's all I'm gonna do for tonight. Nice and smooth. That shell mill did a darn good job. All right, so now I gotta set up to cut the other side of this thing, and when I first cut this side, it didn't really matter which way I put it in. But now that I have one side cut, and I want the other side parallel to it, I've gotta make sure that I put it in so this is parallel. And I thought about, well, there's a number of ways I could probably handle that, but then it occurred to me, why not just rest this up like this on this shelf of the uh, of the jaw. Okay. The only thing I'm not sure about, yeah, well, that's not going to work because I'm going to barely be grabbing onto the other end here. So what I'll have to do is I'll have to uh, I'll use these parallels. All right. So first, let me get all these chips out of here. All right. So. I think these are going to be a little too tall. Yeah. Um, probably the shorter ones. Uh, Alright, you just use a 1, 2, 3 block. I didn't want that way, I want this way. There we go. No, oh, the 1, 2, 3 block's not going to work because it's not going to let me close the jaws down far enough to get on there. I'm going to use these instead. Double check my measurement. I think it was 470 thousandths. Yep. And I know from the other night that I can take 200 thousandths and a cut.
coming from all of a sudden. That was weird. Taking the heavier cut actually made it quiet down. And it's weird because the squeaking was almost like the cutter was rubbing, but it sounded like the squeaking noise was coming out of the top, the top of the machine. Which is weird. I wonder if that's actually the belt. Alright, truth of the matter is, the position of this uh, hole that I'm going to drill is not so critical that I couldn't have just scribed uh, a line from that corner right there to this corner, this corner to this corner, and where the two lines cross, use that as my center point, and that would be pretty much in the center of this square right here that's milled out. So, I could have just done that, that would be a quick and easy way. But I wanted to try and give myself some experience using the center finder, uh, the edge finder, I should say. Edge finder. So I've got this edge finder here, it's got a little bit of a step to it. And so that pin is 200 thousandths uh, on the dot. Makes the math easy. Because when you come up to the edge, you're going to be hitting this outer edge so that you can accommodate for half the diameter of the, uh, the pin there, which half of 200 thousandths is 100 thousandths even. I've got the quill all the way down to where it hits the stop. The reason why I want this at the same exact height when I t touch off on the other side is because of the fact that there's actually a uh, there's a curve to this side. Here. This isn't this isn't a 90 degree edge right here. So I'm actually hitting a little bit below this, but as long as I'm hitting the same plane as on this side as I am on this side. It should still end up being halfway. That's also assuming that this is perfectly level, which it is. I've got it down on some thin parallels in the vise. This surface should be pretty parallel to the other surface, relatively speaking. Uh, so I could do that, touch off here, zero my dial, raise the quill, bring the uh, table all the way over to the other side uh, so that the uh, center finder, uh, the edge finder is on this side, and then come back and touch off here. Right, it's just kicked over right there. So right there appears to be that edge, and I'm 160 thousandths over one inch. So 1.160. So if I take half of that, that'll be uh, 580. Okay, and then I've got to take half of the. Um, half of the diameter of that center finder. So that'll be 580 plus 100 will be 680. Where am I subtracting? Let's see. If I'm if I'm going to come I'm going to start from this edge again and then I'm going to come over 580 and then yeah, half of the diameter will give me the middle. So 680 thousandths from this edge. So let's try that. I can still see that's off. Why am I having such a hard time with this? I bet you it has to do with something. I'm, I'm probably not taking into account the fact that I've got a 
I think I gotta add a hundred thousand to compensate for what, what I'm doing on this end, and then it cancels out this hundred thousand that I gotta do on this end. I bet you that's what it is. 480 looks shy, and 680 was too far over. I bet you 580, which is half of my 1.160, is gonna be right on. I'm gonna do 580, try that. 580. Oh, hell. I pride myself on being able to understand spatial relationships and I'm uh, just completely. I don't know what I was thinking. This is obviously wider than one inch. I'm doing 10 revolutions on that and going, oh yeah, duh, that's 100,000. I mean, that's 1,000. No, it's, it's every, every rotation of the handle is 200 thousandths. The knee is 100 thousandths. So, duh. Now this one's a lot easier because this plane is 90 degrees to this plane, so I could just touch off on this edge. And then this plane right here is 90 degrees to this top plane here, so I could just touch off on this upper edge. And that'll be my two, my two points there. So I've already locked the, uh, locked the x-axis because I've got that set. So now I'm just going to do the y. Now because I'm touching off with the leading edge here and then also the leading edge here, both sides of the uh, edge finder are touching the edges. I don't have to compensate for that. So I can just take the full 1724, divide that by two, it gives me 862. So I'm, gonna, I'm on the edge again, okay? And so I'm gonna come over 862 and then add a hundred thousandths for half the diameter of my edge finder, which would be 962, should put me right in the middle. And I'll lock that. That looks good to me. Well, the memory card's filling up, but uh, I was drilling with that last drill and something gave way inside the head on the mill and I just lost the uh, low end drive. So I was working a good and high range, so I'm just going to use the high range countersink both ends a little bit to chamfer it and uh, it'll be.